podcast. She is uh, on the <laughs> all the socials I found out this morning after doing a little research. Also got a new single we're going to talk about. And uh, Indiana Masari, am I saying, the, the, did I get the last name even close, I guess? You did get the last name pretty close. Masari, you're right. <laughs> well, first off, thank you so much for, for taking the time to be on today. And uh, Man Alive, uh, how much are you looking forward to 2021 after what 2020 ended up being, right? I'm honestly hoping for a much better 2021, but I'm trying to ease into it slowly and carefully and just make sure none of us mess anything up. <laughs> um, but yeah, definitely looking forward to a, a better 2021. But honestly, my 2020 wasn't too bad. Besides the global pandemic, but 2020, uh, I met some of my best friends. I released some music. I grew on social media. Yeah, I had a great time. So you take no. the good with the bad, you see. That's right. And uh, I hope my dog doesn't make too much noise. She uh, oh, she good. didn't want to be in the other room. <laughs> <laughs> you're good. Mine, mine might bark a couple of times too. So <laughs> Now, you, you talked about the social media. Do you think that the, 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 the social media for you really helped you deal with what 2020 was and, and tried to keep uh, upbeat and positive, if you will? Yeah, 100%. I think it definitely gave me an outlet, something to do, something other to think about, like when I was just trapped in, in my house. Um, I met like two of my best friends because of social media and because of TikTok. And I created my own podcast with them. And yeah, so it definitely, definitely helped. Now, does, was music the first love for you? Was uh, was acting maybe the first love? Which Or, or did you, are, are you kind of conflicted in that? Well, music and acting kind of came along at the same time. Um, I always thought, like I did musical theater back in Australia growing up, um, and I never really thought of pursuing them as a career, as like a career choice, until I came over here just to visit my brother, and then I fell into the industry in the best way possible, and I fell in love with making music. I think I recorded my first song when I was like 14. It's about four years ago now. Um, but besides then, I'd never been in the studio. I sung, but like never professionally. And I just fell in love with it. And I booked my first, um, what's it called? Oh, my first commercial and went on auditions and yeah. So they kind of came at the same time. They're kind of both equal loves. Now, do you, do you have, is the music easier for you? Is the acting easier for you? Which, uh, which do you find to be the, your comfort zone? I mean, I think they're both definitely in my comfort zone. I think music definitely has a lot more work involved in it because, you know, acting, I learn my lines, show up to set and I become this person. So acting's always come super easily to me. Music obviously comes easy to me as well. It's just a lot more work. You know, you've got to come up with melodies, lyrics, talk to your producers about the kind of vibe you want for the song. And so it definitely is just like, it just depends, honestly, but sometimes music and like songs can come to you in like 20 minutes and you write a whole song and you're done. So it just, it depends. Now, what, what is normally the first, uh, the, the first thing for you with a song? Is it, do you hear, is, do you hear a vibe? Is it maybe a hook? What, what, what is it that uh, is the, the opener for you? It all comes in different ways for me, but recently it's been like producers playing me beats and I've been like, oh, I hear like these lyrics are normally the first, first step is a concept because like I love lyrics. I love telling stories. I love, you know, just putting all my emotions into songs and hoping people can relate to them. Um, so yeah, normally concepts come first and I'm like, okay, I really want to write a song about this because this is how I'm feeling right now. And then I'll go into melodies, lyrics, storytelling, vibes, whatever, and we'll just go from there. Now, who are your who are your biggest in musical influences? Uh, who who was the, the the first one that you were like, I want to sing like them? Who was that? Who was that person for you? That's a really good question. Um, honestly, the the first things that were like, I want to sing like her. I want to be like her. It was kind of like it was like Miley Cyrus, Britney Spears. It was all that because I was like, oh my gosh, like the costumes, the glamour, the like everything, they're just having so much fun. Miley, oh no, Britney Spears was the first concert I went to. Uh, it was on our circus tour. And then, um, but I fell asleep halfway through. I was like eight years old. So we're just, yeah, anyway. Um, and then the first one that I like fully went to was just me and my mom. I went to Miley Cyrus's like Broken Hearts tour or Hearts tour or whatever. And I like saw her on stage and I was like, this is what I want to do. Like I lost my shit. So, oh, sorry. 
back cussing. That's my bad. It, it it does happen. It happens from time to time. Now now how um how cool was it the the first time you got to be on stage and, and see the crowd uh vibe into your music? I mean, especially after growing up and seeing others doing that. I mean, for you, what was that first experience like? Um, the first like the most memorable. I went to Milwaukee and I performed for um like one of their summer shows with Kiss FM. And I think the crowd was like 5,000 or something. And I walked out and I let, I thought the the venue was big when I was sound checking and then it filled with 5,000 people. <laughs> I weirdly, before I got on stage, I was so nervous. I was like, holy crap, how can I do, I can't do this. Like in my head, I was like literally about to back out. And then I walked on stage and it was like, I would love to relive those four songs again like I would die to go back there it was so much fun no no it was what, really cool. go ahead. what what's been the the best experience for you what's been the it was the first time has that been the most memorable experience for you uh stage wise yeah I mean they've all been amazing but that was definitely one of the one of the craziest one of my favorite artists Bryce Vine he was performing as well um and he was in the dressing room right next to me and as we were crossing um stages because he performed right next to me so I came off and he was coming on he was like great set and I was like <laughs> I was like I love you so yeah that was pretty cool now in the midst of 2020 to to have work on new music I mean how how challenging was that and and how different uh, did you have to make things this time around um, it was definitely smaller. Normally I have like 10 people in the studio with me, just like either listening or I have friends coming to hang out or it's just, you know, producers, writers, everyone. But for the most part, whenever I've worked on music in 2020, it's just been my producer and me and maybe another writer. Um, and like, eh, you gotta go get COVID tested before you go in. And, you know, it's definitely been worth it because during this time has definitely been my most creative. Like I've just needed the most creative outlet possible but it's definitely been different and I feel like the music has definitely taken a bit of a, a turn because it's like what what are we going to talk about like it's, it's yeah. yeah now where did uh where where did the new single squeeze where did uh where did that one come from the inspiration and and what was the process like with it so basically squeeze I actually wrote and recorded about a year ago and I never put it out um I don't know why I was just like oh maybe I'll put it out maybe I won't I don't know and then everybody seemed to be excited for it and I wanted to release music and I was like sure I'll put it out um squeeze honestly just comes from that time period when it's right before you get into your I don't need anyone phase in a breakup it's like I just want a boyfriend like that's where squeeze was written from but it also comes from, from like I just I love being around people I'm very much a people person so it was like I just want people around me right now and it was coming from a time when I was honestly feeling a little lonely and I was honestly feeling like I needed somebody to squeeze and just be with and so yeah that's good that's where squeeze came from now now how being a people person obviously 2020 they uh, had to cut back on that what what did Not 20 my year yeah what did 2020 and and having to maybe be a little bit more introspective how what did that maybe teach you about yourself 2020 definitely taught me that having closer friends like fewer close friends is like is way more important to me than having 20 like distant ones I don't know I I realized that you really got to find your your people and once you find your people like don't let go of them and hang on to them and they're super important they'll get you through anything if you really need to so that's what 2020 taught me I mean I do definitely miss going out and seeing people and just being with a bunch of people but I think going into like the new year, I think I'll maybe be okay with just being with two people. You know what I mean? Now, now does it change the, the, the goal setting process for you because of how slow, how slowed down things were last year? I mean, I've tried to not let it affect my goal setting, but obviously it's definitely changed. I really wanted to tour. I wanted to travel more. I wanted to do all these things that aren't allowed right now. So I think it's not necessarily changed me working towards my goals. I think my goals have just changed. So. And my German shepherd is, uh, she, I, I can't see my screen, but uh, she, she keeps oh, wanting to say hi to you. <laughs> oh, I love German shepherds. She's, she's been wanting to talk the whole time. Now, uh, 
the 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 social media for you how important is it especially in the, the midst of what's going on in the world and uh, in people's lives to 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 bring a little uh, happiness a smile uh, uh, and something good in each in somebody's day i think social media has been a really really uh big aspect of like helping to me it's like been something that i can turn to and if i'm bored i can go on social media if i want to just post anything I want, I can go on social media. So yeah, it's definitely been, it's also been a connecting platform for me to like connect with the outside world and other people during this time where you can't. So social media, social media has definitely been a huge helping hand right now. Now, what has, what was, what has been maybe the most bizarre performance that you've had to do? Was it, was it maybe a Zoom recording? I, I talked to, I think the best one I've had so far was somebody said uh, in the midst of all the pandemic where nobody could be close, they got in the back of a truck and just rode down Main Street and sitting in the back of the truck just so they could play. Oh, wow, that's amazing. Um, I haven't really done any performances during during COVID, but if I was to pull the weirdest performance I've ever done, period, it would probably be performing in a Dave & Buster's. So, yeah, <laughs> I don't know how, how I came to do that. I just did. Was it impromptu yeah. or was that booked? No, it was booked. It was booked. I did like an hour set. God, that was long. Why did I do that? I don't know. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That's probably the weirdest performance I've ever done, honestly. But I did Busters. I haven't been lucky enough to perform during COVID, like do Zoom or anything. But um, yeah, I guess we'll see. There you go. Now, uh, I know your schedule's kind of crazy like everybody oh, yeah. else has been, <laughs> and I do appreciate uh, the, the time that you've taken with us. The the, the single coming up, also, uh, it, when tour dates and uh, upcoming events, also, I, I know you got a new movie to talk about a little bit. Mira and uh, and Sean. Sean's been a guest, a, a friend of our, our show for probably about the last 10 years, had him on several times. How wow. cool is it to work with Mira and Sean on oh, a Oh, my God. It was the coolest thing. I was so nervous for one because I felt like I was like, they have been on some of the most classic, like the biggest movies of, of you know, in the world. Like, and I was like, I don't know what, like I was panicking my first day of set, panicking, but I had a really good talk with Sean about like his daughters and just, just about being a teenager. And, you know, I just seek so much advice from those that were bigger and more experienced than me. Um, I spoke to Jim O'Hare is also on it. So he's in Parks and Rec and he's in so many amazing things. And I sat down to him and I think it was a, not necessarily a reality check, but he was telling me, he was like, ah, I got to go to Palm Springs tonight. And I was like, oh, why do you have to go to Palm Springs? He goes, ah, oh, my tenants, they need something done. So I'm going to go down there and go do it for him. And I was like, what? <laughs> you The morning you're filming a movie and now you're just I don't know. It was a really, it was a really cool thing to to see, but it was amazing to work on, to work on set with those people and just to learn from, you know, the best. So I had an amazing time. So if, if folks want to find out uh, about that movie, about the, the, the single and everything else, social media wise, what's, where, where's the, uh, where's the number one location? You guys can check me out on Instagram. My ad is literally just Indiana. So you guys can go there. I'm also on Twitter under Indiana. I'm on, I'm on Facebook. I'm on TikTok. Yeah, I'm pretty much everywhere. Just type in Indiana or Indiana Masara and you should find it. <laughs> well, that is, that is cool. And uh, Indiana, again, thank you. I, I know today's schedule was a little crazy. We finally got it worked out. A little bit. Yes, we did. Thank you so much for having me. Yes, and, and thanks for helping me get some cool dad points as well. Oh, I got you. Anytime you need some cool dad points, give me a call and I'll, I'll Zoom Trinity. 